Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. On this one, I'm going to be showing you how to launch RetroArch from a shortcut so you could directly launch any game you want to play from the emulator you're playing without having to go through the pain of, you know, loading the core, then looking for the ROM and loading it that way. So with this video, I'm going to assume you already have RetroArch installed and then I'll set up another video later on how to do it from scratch if you don't have RetroArch. Uh, so what we're going to do, go into the directory that has the RetroArch installed. And then on my uh, video on the description, you're going to have a link to a file that I called RetroArch Shortcut Template. You're going to download that. It's basically a batch file. And I'm going to show you how to make one of those right now. It's super easy. Uh, so if you want to make it simple for you, just make two windows. One where you have the file you downloaded and then the window on the right side that has the emulator. So basically here's going to be the file that you downloaded from my uh, site. So just right click on that. Now I set it up uh, this way on purpose so you can see where you're going to put the information. So right here where the big letters are with the, uh, you know, the arrows pointing into each other, you're going to put whatever, uh, uh, Levitro, you know, DLL you're using. For example, if you're using the, uh, for example, the uh, Saturn core, it's going to be this one right here. So that's how you're going to find out which ones you're using. You're going to go into the cores folder in the RetroArch directory. Double click on that. So we're going to do Saturn right now. So you're simply going to click on that, right click, rename so you can copy the name. Then you're going to highlight this from the both arrows and you're going to paste that in there. So now you're basically telling it that this is the emulator you want to run. Then you're going to do it one more time here where it says config. So once again, we're replacing that with that name. So now it's going to load, you know, the config file and the, uh, the core itself. Then this next one here, the capital letters here with the arrows pointing in, this is where you're going to put the name of the game you're going to run. So in this one, we're going to do Daytona since that's the one I have set up here. So you need to name it the exact name so you don't have any issues when you're loading them. And then you can verify you know that by going into your ROMs folder. So what I'm going to go ahead is go ahead and close this. I'm not going to even finish this out because I have one already done and I'll show you what it looks like what it looks like when then you're done. So as you can see there, the changes that we made. And then as long as this file goes into your directory for RetroArch, you're not going to have any issues because you're going to keep it as simple as it is because it's going to read the information from within that folder itself. So try to keep this in there. Put your ROMs in a folder that's just called ROMs. And then I'll show you real quick. So it's going to end up looking like this. And that's going to launch the game without having to go, you know, launching the core, looking for the game, loading that. So it's a lot easier. So we'll close this for now. So this is, like I said, ROM's folder with the games inside. So we're going to launch the uh, Saturn emulator, which is the Beetle core. And... We're just going to launch this and I'll show you how easy this is. And I'm in the wrong place, so I'm going to copy this file into the actual folder with the emulator. Once I paste this in there, okay, it's going to overwrite it because I already have it in there. But here's a good thing with this. Once you have this in there, you can create a shortcut to that file by just right-clicking, create shortcut. Or you can simply leave it as, as is. But, you know, obviously you're probably going to want to make a shortcut because you can launch it right away. So we're going to go ahead and double click on this. And as you can see, it's going to load the game up. You didn't need to load, uh, you know, the retro arc window, the GUI. You didn't need to load the core. You didn't, you know, need to look for the ROM. So this is like way super easy, especially for this type of emulator where you're not going to really be running a lot of ROMs. You can directly just create a shortcut and go from there instead of having to go through all the steps. Now we're going to jump out of here and then I'm going to also show you if you're doing something like, for example, the Mr. Boom, which is basically just the core itself, the uh, file is going to look like this. 
So you're going to delete all the extra stuff that was in there. You're going to put this line in here. And you're going to do this in here. So cores. And you're going to put it like this. So we'll go back to the template that I did. See, so you're not going to need all this extra stuff because this is just the core by itself. So all you're really going to need, we can get rid of this. And then the name of the core on that one is just Mr. Boom. So we're going to copy that. We're going to put that in the new one. So we're replacing that. Paste. We're going to save it. And I don't think I need to copy and paste that one because it should already be here. But we'll go ahead and launch that. And as you can see, it's straight into the game. And one quick shout out here. I am going to show you how to do the actual batch file. If you don't, you know, if for some reason you lose the template or whatever, but you're going to want to keep this because, you you know, you're going to need to remember the, uh, the formula here for getting the stuff in here. So if you want to do a new one, it's right click new text document you know you're gonna call it whatever you're gonna you know play we'll just call it this for now so right click new text document paste you know you're already gonna have this so you're gonna open this paste this in there now here's the trick with this and you need to save this as a batch file so when you're saving if you for any whatever reason lose one or want to make a fresh one you're gonna uh, you know do just like I showed you right click uh, you're gonna create a new notepad file save as you need to make sure this section here is reading all files and then because if you save it like this it's gonna save it in a file format that's not gonna be a batch file and it's not gonna work so the extension for that is BAT so period BAT and then we'll just call this the total one so it doesn't overwrite what's already there so there you go as you can see and you can tell because it has like a little different icon on here looks like a little gear so just to prove that works you're gonna copy I'm gonna paste it in here for you and then we're gonna launch it straight through this and once again you don't have to worry about going through the extra steps it's gonna download or rather start the game right away alrighty and you can do this for like any core you have for example uh, we can even do uh, what else did I have on here let's do the Super Nintendo one so rename copy that way we have the name of it now I'm gonna go ahead and copy the info from here since I already deleted most of those so copy so we're gonna right click and copy the name of the core for this one so copy we're gonna replace the information in here and then we just need to put the name of the ROM for the Mario game in here so we can delete that extension because it's a uh, SNES ROM so it's going to be SMC and then we need to change the name of the folder to so this is fine so we're going to leave that there then we're going to type in 
S N E S rhymes and then do another backward slash on there. So, so now it's telling it it's in the rhymes folder inside the S N E rhymes folder and this is the name of the game. So we're going to save that and it should start just the same as the others. Just need to nickname it that. So they remember dot bat, and this has to be set to all files. So I'm going to go ahead and drive that into the folder, and it should launch without a problem. See, and as you can see, that worked the same way. It went straight to the game. All right, so hopefully this will help you guys. I know this was a great help to me when I found out how to do this. Because like I said, if you're running games, it's kind of a pain in the butt to launch. You know, you got to click on so many things before you can even launch the game so this will be a straight away click on the file and it'll launch you into whatever game you set it up for so hopefully this helped you guys go ahead and please subscribe that way i can go ahead and keep putting up new content you guys have a great day take care